Hi, and thanks for joining our session today. Uh, we're going to be talking about getting to zero touch IT and best practices uh, for user lifecycle management. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is, that's what we'll be talking about. My name is Brian Farrell. I'm the senior IT manager at Better Cloud. Uh, I have been in IT for over a decade. Uh, I've worked uh, from I've worked here. I've worked uh, at a music school education franchise, empowering rock stars to learn uh, to to use their computers. Uh, I also previously worked at uh, uh, at the Apple Store, at the Genius Bar, fixing your computers and your iPhones. And I'm joined today with my co-presenter, by my co-presenter, Jen Fish. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I also uh, have a long career in the tech industry that started uh, with the Apple Store as well, although I was selling those iPods and uh, computers and then sending them back to you at the Genius Bar. Um, yeah, thank after you so that... much for giving, uh, my, giving customers ammo, literal ammo to throw at me. <laughs> mm, it only happened, what, two or three times? Uh, yeah, no big. After the Apple Store, I uh, was a technology consultant uh, working with small businesses and uh, you know residential customers uh, before moving to uh, before I moved to New York. And since then, I've been in the startup industry in a variety of IT roles, from project manager to IT specialist. Um, and now I'm with uh, Better Cloud and our professional services uh, team, which we call the Expert Advisory Group. And I'm an implementation specialist. So for some of you folks watching, I may have worked with you when you first purchased better cloud uh, my job is to enable new customers and teach them how to use better cloud so that they are off and running as soon as possible after they have purchased it from us and one of the things that we work on when we are doing implementation is uh, you know uh, implementing automa automation so that IT admins uh, can cut down on the number of routine, predictable, time-consuming tasks. Because I think, as we know, Brian, uh, especially in today's world, post or in the middle of pandemic, hard to say what stage we're at, depending on where, where you live. <laughs> but uh, you know, we're all everybody is busier than ever, especially IT admins. Yeah, I mean, uh, I certainly identify with this. Uh, I've, I don't think I've ever worked on an IT team where I was like, yes, we definitely have the number of people that I want. Um, and the pandemic has certainly impacted how IT has continued to work. Um, we've had to switch completely uh, to supporting a remote and hybrid kind of work from anywhere environment uh, while maintaining the same great employee experience we've had and making sure that nobody feels left out everybody has access to the tools and technology that they need and everybody can get help as soon as they as soon as they need help and also um trying to even more so to empower users to, to be able to help themselves um there's also been an explosion of SaaS adoption uh we've been obviously we've been using SaaS tools for quite a while but uh every company has been kind of exploding their SaaS adoption and so this is uh you know, there, we need to now support apps that are outside of the realm of just the things that IT provides. Uh, Shadow IT exists. Your users are going to use things uh, that you don't, you're not aware of, and you want to make sure that you're there to support them. So, because of all of this, efficiency becomes really the name of the game, uh, which is what this discussion, why this discussion is all about automation. So all of these challenges that you just, that you just talked about, uh, Brian, and really just put a bow on it for me now. But uh, you know, this is really just points to all the the need that we have today uh, to automate what we can when we can, because there are just so many other things going on, um, and we need to automate the things that. Uh, you know, computers can do so that the people can do the things that only people can do. Many of you have probably already heard of the term zero touch IT, uh, but Brian, uh, I think you and I both know since we already mentioned our long and illustrious careers in the industry, uh, what is the actual reality of that term? Yeah, so zero touch IT is definitely an aspirational thing. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's false. It's two touches. I mean, the reality of the game, the reality of the, the of it is, is that when we say zero touch IT, uh, we're talking about uh, no clicks required to provision everything an employee needs to start working on day one. As an example, I mean, yes, at some point somebody's going to need to click something, uh, but the the real idea behind this is to reduce the number of touch points that your team has to be involved with on a day to day basis uh, in order to get work done. So getting people onboarded, 
like put that power back in the hands of the stakeholders who are responsible for that process. In the case of onboarding, it's typically, you know, your HR people team. Um, what it means is getting you to not be clicking anything and giving them the power so that they can, you know, at the end of the day, they have to fill out a form, you know, first name, last name, email, et cetera. Uh, but then from that point on, the process should be automated. So we're going to talk a little bit about how that can be done. So one of the enablers of Zero Touch IT is the use of custom triggers within better cloud workflows. So uh, we, we used to, and we still do to some extent, uh, rely on state changes in other applications, uh, you know, things like group ads, group removes, uh, changing OUs, things like that. Um, however, uh, and, and then also manually initiating those changes. Uh, we want to get past that so you can use custom triggers uh, to actually eliminate a lot of those steps as well. One of the enablers of Zero Touch IT is the use of custom triggers within a better cloud workflow. So we know that customers have a need to trigger workflows from custom apps uh, beyond those that are natively uh, available in Better Cloud's integration center. So custom triggers empower IT to initiate and condition workflows from webhooks and ticketing systems like Jira, Zapier, or Zendesk, or a Google Form, or whatever. Um, and previously, we were relying on things like group changes, user creation, user deactivation, um, OU changes, things like that. Those are all still valid triggers, but you may need to, if, if you're really going to put the, the power to the people, uh, you, uh, <laughs> you're going to need more, no, more triggers than just that. Uh, so. Custom triggers, uh, you, we get that data from uh, you know, this form or from a ticketing system, and then that custom trigger passes values from that form into Better Cloud to initiate workflow actions. Uh, there are some considerations. Jen, what are some of the things to consider when using custom triggers? Yes, so this feature, uh, first of all, uh, does require that you have the AP, the Better Cloud API as part of your subscription to Better Cloud, um, because what we are doing here is we're taking a JSON payload from an external system and then sending it to Better Cloud where our API will receive it and uh, then pass that information into a workflow. Uh, these uh, Whatever system that you're using, uh, the external system must be able to send outgoing webhooks um, in a JSON format, and those uh, payloads cannot contain any arrays. Uh, currently, that is something that Better Cloud cannot uh, process on our end, uh, arrayed data, but that is something that our customer engineers and our engineering teams are working on. Great. Um, and we're going to see a little bit more about what a zero touch workflow looks like because, you know, I don't want to sit here copying and pasting uh, data from one page to another. Uh, I want to, I want to just let the robots do the things that robots do. So uh, <laughs> I say almost zero touch is almost because again, at some point, somebody has to enter first name, last name, email, and probably a start date. Uh, but that, start, that somebody is HR or your people team. So uh, on the left here, you can see HR is entering data into their system and they create a ticket or they fill out a form or that, you know, whatever it is that you can get data in one place that can then be sent as a webhook. So that data is sent as a JSON payload web request to a custom trigger in Better Cloud. Uh, that trigger is the condition that starts the Better Cloud workflow, uh, which initiates the provisioning process in your identity provider, uh, birthright and line of business apps, and then configures all of the advanced settings. So Jen has a great demo of this, and you can see Better Cloud in action. So I'm going to pass it off to Jen. Great. So I am going to share my screen now. And uh, just a couple of notes for this demo. There are, just in the interest of time, I'm going to point out where I might have done a little work pre-advance uh, to our session. Um, the other thing I'm going to note is that this demo is going to focus on uh, using JIRA for your custom trigger. Now, uh, I realize that some of you watching this demo may not use JIRA for your ticketing system, um, and, but, uh, but we do also have documentation on some other apps that can also be uh, used as a custom trigger, and we'll get into that at the end of the session. So I'm going to start in the Integration Center, and uh, because I'm working with Atlassian, which is an actions-only integration, I don't actually have to do anything uh, differently other than just adding an extension to what is already installed. 
Uh, our full integrations, though, uh, Google, Microsoft Office, those you would have to create a separate integration to set up a custom trigger. Uh, but for our actions only ones, all I need to do is to just go to my existing integration, click modify, and add a new extension. Um, I'm going to be adding a trigger for workflows. Next, it's going to ask me to name this trigger. And when I click Next, it's going to generate this unique URL. This is going to be the endpoint that I'm going to be sending my payload to. And the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go uh, over to JIRA. In JIRA, you can see I already have a uh, service project set up. Uh, where to handle onboarding. Um, I've already created a type of service request for my users to uh, submit when they want to hire, uh, set up a new hire. And I was able to do that by going into the uh, settings of my project, so project settings down here. The next, the way where I'm going to configure my request type is in here, request types. And thankfully, JIRA actually already has a pre-built service request type that's going to work well for our purposes. Um, it's just here where it says onboard new employee. And in here is where I can next, I can uh, configure different fields. Um, so if there's more information that I want to include on this new hire ticket, um, I can configure that in here. Right now I'm in the agent view, so this is what my uh, help desk folks will see when the request comes in. Um, I, if I click over to request form, this will be what the form looks like to my end users who are submitting the request. And I can actually preview that form in the portal. So as you can see here, I'm asking for their first name, last name, email, title, and department. Uh, so now I have my request all set up. I have my endpoint in Better Cloud waiting for a payload. So how do I connect the two? I'm going to create an automation in my JIRA project, and I'm going to do that by going back again to my project settings and then down to where it says uh, automation. Now, in preparation for today's demo, I already did create an automation rule, as you can see here, but I'm going to create a new one here so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to just, just click Create Rule. Uh, what is going to trigger my automation in JIRA? It's going to be triggered when an issue is created, meaning when this ticket is raised. And I can click Save. My next action, I can do a couple of different things here. I could just go right to an action, uh, or I could set a condition. Now, if you decide that you want to set up different types of service requests and use them in custom triggers, you will need to use this condition so that you are calling the right workflow depending on the situation. So here, I'm going to say, if new condition, if the issue field contains, and my issue field that I'm going to use for this is the summary, and you'll recall that when I showed you that request, uh, these, each request had the same summary of the issue, which was new hire onboarding. Now I'm going to save that. And next, I'm going to now uh, select a new action. And that action is going to be to send a request to a URL. And that web request uh, to a given URL is going to be that Better Cloud endpoint. So to configure this, I'm going to go back to Better Cloud and just make sure I have that uh, URL copied correctly. So I'm just going to grab it here and say copy. I'm going to go back to JIRA. So I'm going to paste my URL here. Uh, I don't need to put anything in the headers, uh, but in the request body, I do need to put uh, what I'm going to be sending over. And that's going to be custom data. So when you get to this part here, uh, the data, the data that you're going to be sending over to that endpoint, um, I will be honest with you, this part can be a little tricky figuring out what fields and what format you want to send them over to. Um, I'm going to just uh, copy and paste some of this information that I've already, uh, I've already done the work to figure this out for you here. So uh, as you can see here, these are the fields that are in my ticket on the left-hand side. Um, and then on the right-hand side, um, how I'm going to reference them. Now, if you're unsure about how this is going to look or you're not sure if you've grabbed the right fields, um, there is um, some 
third party tools you can use to validate your payload. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to replace this URL for one second. I'm just going to copy it and paste it into my notepad just to keep it safe for now. And I'm going to replace this URL uh, with a different URL, one from a third party service um, called webhook.site. Uh, what this website will do is it gives you a custom URL that you can use to test um, webhooks to. So I'm going to just temporarily say, put that URL here. I'm going to go now to validate my web configuration. And I'm going to put in the an issue that I've already sent over that I know is a request that's already in my portal. And once I click validate, this is going to send the test data from the fields that were collected in, in this issue to my webhook.site URL just so I can validate that the correct information was being sent. So once I click validate, all right, I've gotten a 200 OK response, which is great. And I'm going to just move this window over now. This is the webhook.site uh, uh, screen that I sent that information to. And if we refresh the page, you can see that I have sent over this payload and onboarded uh, for Albert Davidson. And you can see, though, that even though his first name was Albert, I was able to put his preferred first name of Al in for his email along with his title and department. All of that looks great. So the next thing I'm going to do is save, is replace my URL back to the Better Cloud URL and save my automation in JIRA. So I also want to note that uh, we can also see the results of this uh, payload down here as well. Now I'm going to hit validate one more time. And the reason why is because I now that I'm confident that my payload looks, looks correct and is sending over the fields that I want, I can now uh, click on validate one more time to actually send this payload over to the Better Cloud. And the reason why I want to do this now is because once I do that, uh, Better Cloud will receive this data and then I can configure my fields for my trigger. So I'm going to click validate here gotten the OK response. Now I'm going to go back to Better Cloud. And as you can see, my request was received. And now it's asking me to configure my custom trigger parameters. Um, so as you can see here, it's brought over all the things that were in my service request. Up here, it says select a target. Now what this means is how do I want to identify uh, what the custom trigger ran on in my audit logs. So I'm going to pick email here. So now whenever this custom trigger runs, it will show me the email address of the user that it ran on in the audit logs. And then I'll be able to find uh, in my audit logs uh, that information much more easily. Uh, I'm not actually going to go through this whole exercise of correcting the fields uh, since I've done it already today. And I can show you what that looks like once they're correct. And this is what it looks like when all the fields have been corrected and look uh, as they should. You can see here that I've selected, we also give you the option to choose these parameters as either if conditions for your workflow or dynamic fields. And I've selected that I want to be able to reference the first name, last name, email, title, and department as dynamic fields. And I want to be able to use email, title, and department as if conditions. Once I've figured out all that, I can click Save and Publish. And there is my new hire from JIRA ticket that I made earlier. So next, I want to put those fields into a workflow. And as you can see here, I've done that in uh, a workflow, new hire from JIRA ticket. And as you can see, my trigger is going to be my new hire from JIRA ticket. And then my first action is going to be to create the user in Google. And here you can see all of my fields from my ticket are now accessible to me to be used in my workflow. My second action of this workflow is I'm going to just edit the user's profile in Google to also include their department and title. So I have my workflow ready to go. I have my JIRA automation ready to go. So now let's see this all come together in a service request. So here's the request that I raised earlier today for Al Davidson. And now let's raise a new request.
you can see uh, a request that we raised earlier. I'm going to raise a new one now. I can submit that request and I'm going to go back to Better Cloud where we should see that our workflow either has been triggered or will be triggered very soon. As you can see, it's already uh, started, so very quick. All right, and we see that it's a success. So we've created Coach Arian's Google account. We've edited his profile. And now all we have to do is go over to Google and verify all of this is correct. We can see there he is. And if we click into his profile, we can see that he has the correct title and department in his profile. So there's the department and there is his title. So we were able to onboard a onboard someone just from a Google, just from a Jira ticket service request to Better Cloud creating their Google account um, in just a few minutes. Um, I also just want to know, obviously, I could have added uh, other actions to this workflow and created more accounts. Um, but uh, for the purposes of this demo, um, I think this is a, a good start. Great. So thank you so much for that demo, Jen. So uh, there's some considerations for these uh, custom triggers, right? Absolutely. Um, as we mentioned before, you're going to want to make sure that uh, the app that you're working with is going to be able to send outgoing webhooks in a JSON formatted payload. Um, again, uh, and I should have just set this up front, again, just bears repeating, you also do have to have um, the AP, Better Cloud API added to your uh, subscription. Um, and uh, you also just want to make sure that you test your payload before publishing your workflow in Better Cloud just to save you a little aggravation and having to recreate your trigger over and over again as you make adjustments to your payload. Um, the other thing, uh, when you're thinking about how once you've decided on your custom trigger and you're thinking about how you want to integrate this into workflows, I think it really helps, Brian, to think about, um, you know, where does your process start? when you're creating your workflows? Is it with an HR ticket? Is it with just an email and then somebody else is filling out a form on your team? Is it maybe it's a Google form that um, another team, uh, the hiring manager fills out and HR doesn't even see it? Um, so there can be a couple of different ways that, uh, there can be many different ways that people onboard their employees. Um, so really think about where your process starts and how you want that to be initiated uh, when you're working with custom triggers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I also you know, find it helpful to think about ahead of time, what profile fields do I actually need to make sure that all of my users have? So uh, it doesn't help if you get through this entire process and you're missing some key important details like you know, their department or their manager, uh, or you know, if you have cost centers or their location or things like that. Um, you want to make sure that you start off with all of the data that you might ever possibly need because you're going to thank yourselves later for that. And then also to think about what is the source of truth for that data and, and how is it actually updated? So where does the data that you're getting, where does it live? Um, if HR is filling it out, um, is HR going to up, fill out another form to update for when somebody moves? Um, if it's coming from a system like your uh, an HRIS, like ADP uh, or Workday, is that information uh, you know, regularly updated? Is it going to be sustainable for whatever process you've implemented so that you don't have to, um, you know, so that it stays zero touch and doesn't go back to being a lot of touches? And Brian, we, in our example, we did off onboarding, which I think is uh, probably, if I had to guess, gonna be a, a good chunk of the number of custom triggers that our customers are, uh, uh, it's probably the number one use case our customers are going to want to use with custom triggers, uh, but we can use custom triggers to initiate all kinds of workflows. Yeah, I mean, definitely. In addition to onboarding, you can also get close to zero touch uh, or even fully zero touch with uh, both 
you know, with things like offboarding and mid life cycle changes. So those are things that we've recently implemented, uh, specifically mid life cycle changes, to make sure that we don't have to take any action when somebody changes a team within Better Cloud, or somebody gets a promotion, or somebody changes managers. All of those, uh, we have workflows that update uh, their access and entitlements uh, automatically. And so that's an important. You know, that's that's another way you can use custom triggers. Um, offboarding is another way. And then uh, you could also even give your users more control over uh, initiating workflows by building out something like a Slack trigger, so a Slack initiated trigger with a slash command or an app. And then we also have a workflow that handles incident response and it does things like create Zoom rooms, uh, it creates Slack channels, things like that. Uh, you could also give the power to the secure security team to initiate that uh, incident response workflow uh, with a custom trigger. That's awesome. Um, and I also just want to note that within uh, my team, the expert advisory group, we've also um, been doing a lot of uh, testing and been able to prove out uh, the uh, list of applications on the right hand are applications that can be used with custom triggers. So uh, we just showed you how to initiate uh, a workflow from a JIRA ticket. Um, but my team has also been able to make this work with Zendesk, Fresh Service, uh, Zapier, uh, greenhouse and using a Google form with a Google app script. Great. So, uh, you know, you must be sitting there saying, how can I learn more, please? <laughs> Uh, I know that I am, uh, but to learn more about custom, <laughs> to learn more about zero touch IT uh, workflows, custom triggers, and anything else regarding Better Cloud and SaaS ops, uh, feel free to check out any of these resources, like the Monitor, uh, which is a blog post that has new posts every week. Uh, the SaaS ops community—it's a very lively group of people, including myself and Jen, uh, in SaaS ops dot community. Uh, there's also a Slack workspace for us, and um, the Better Cloud Help Center. Obviously, if you need help with anything, uh, our support team has written a lot of articles, really detailed uh, any you know problems you might run into or ideas for getting things set up. And then also we have uh, resources.bettercloud.com, which has content library, videos, eBooks, analyst reports, in-depth research on SaaS management, SaaS operations, uh, and best practices in general. Uh, or you can, if you just wanna see this in action, you can go to bettercloud.com slash request dash a dash demo. So we want to thank you so much for uh, watching and I guess virtually attending our session here today on custom triggers and zero touch IT. Uh, we've got a lot of other great content coming up uh, today and this week. So please make sure to check out our other sessions. Uh, later today, we're going to be uh, have an expert panel on uh, successfully aligning your IT uh, priorities in these changing times. Uh, we're also going to have um, even more information about customization um, in a session with our customer engineering team on enhancing uh, your employees experience with custom integrations. And then uh, also finally today, we're going to have a really interesting panel that I'm looking forward to uh, talking about the challenges and opportunities in diversity in our business. Yeah, I can't so. wait for that one too. So thank you very much again for coming. Uh, please feel free to say hi to Brian or I in Better IT, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you make. Thanks a lot.